I'm going to be presenting a Darwinian view of cancer. I mean, the year 2009, as many people, most people know, is the 200th anniversary of Charles Darwin's birth, and 150 years next month from when his book, on The Origin of Species, was produced. And I've been very interested for many years, as lots of other oncologists are, in how cancer develops as a Darwinian process of natural selection. So I'm going to be talking about that this evening, going into quite a bit of detail on acute lymphoblastic leukemia in children, which is uh, in many ways like other adult cancers, but it's more tractable, genetically more simple. And we've been able to elucidate the sequence of events and to look at the genetic complexity of the disease and to see exactly to what extent it's a Darwinian process. Well, the essence of his idea is that you have genetic variation in a population, you have competition between them, and you have environmental changes so that only very few survive, those equipped with the best adaptations. So you have diversification of species over time. That's exactly how cancer develops in the body, but it's variation of cells, not species and individuals. But it's driven by genetic variation and controls within the body that ensure only few cells survive. And the oncologist is a strong selector with his therapy that only drug-resistant mutants survive. So it's a very Darwinian process. Well, I, th I think it's revealed enormous complexity. It tells, it tells us just what sort of a challenge we've got in cancer. And I think it explains why adva advanced cancer is so intransigent and difficult to treat. What we see in acute leukemias, which are probably much simpler genetically than epithelial cancers, is extraordinary complexity. We, we see between five and 20 subclones that are all genetically different. And if you begin to think about what that means, you can't have evolution and progression of disease without genetic diversity. But there's so much genetic diversity and probably st so many stem cells. You begin to realize that the target we're aiming at with therapy, this bullseye of the stem cells, must be a moving multiple target. So no wonder it's so difficult to hit.